Bible says in John 3 and verse 16, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The world without God is like a well-kept cemetery. Every war in the light. As he is in the light. Hebrews 9 and verse 27. And it's appointed unto men. Once to die. And after this, they touch it. chapter 19 so he ate and drank and lay down again and the angel of the Lord came back the second time and touched him and said arise and eat because the journey is too great for you so he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength in the strength of the meat 40 days and 40 nights unto Horeb the mount of God today I want to share with you on the subject the journey is too great for you. The journey is too great for you. Elijah is the only prophet of Israel who did not die but was raptured. And yet, ironically, Elijah is the only prophet of Israel who prayed to die. The ministry of Elijah is a type of the church of the last days. The church that will be raptured. As the church of the last days, we can learn some important things from the story of Elijah. Number one, Elijah ministered in a time of apostasy. The word apostasy from the Greek word apo from and stasis to depart. It means to depart from. It means a rebellion. A time when the people of God departed from the principles of God, from the word of God, from the standard of God. In the time of Elijah, things had gone from bad to worse. And things were at their lowest. Elijah lived under the reign of King Ahab, the seventh king of Israel. And Ahab inherited the grievous sins of, of his predecessors. He was the son of Omri. And they practiced idolatry. He inherited the worship of the golden calf. That Moses had condemned. But to make matters worse. He married Jezebel. Who served Baal. And so under Ahab. Adding to the problem. And the idolatry that was already in the land. Baalism was introduced. In the reign of King Ahab. And so Ahab went down in the history and the chronicles of Israel, up to his point, he was the worst king ever in the nation of Israel. And in during his reign, it is one of the darkest period in the history of Israel. So under Ahab, Baal, the god of the Canaanite, was worshipped. In Egypt, this same god is called Osiris. In Greece, it is called Zeus, the chief of the gods. In Rome, among the Romans, this god is called Jupiter. And today, we call that god Satan. Baal was the, the chief god, Satan himself. That was the name the Canaanites called him by. You need to understand that. And the religion of Baalism was very perverted. 
Baalism was associated with sexual perversion, the love of money and bloodshed. And these are the things that still drive the cultures of the world today. Money, sex, and even the shedding of blood. The Bible makes us to know that Ahab had killed all the true prophets of God. And those who survived were either silenced or hiding in caves. And I want you to know this is the same strategy Satan use, uses today to get rid of or silence those who speak the un unadulterated word of God. And if he can't kill them or intimidate them, he will label them as troublemakers as, as Elijah was labeled by Ahab. Or judgmental. The prophets that were accepted were the false prophets. And there were 850 of them. And they were all on the king's payroll. So if they wanted their pay, they had to prophesy what Ahab wanted them to prophesy. When God raised true prophets, they were never on anyone's payroll. I want you to know that. This is true. This is biblical. They were never, and I'm not against organizations, but the truth is when God raised prophets, they were never subject to any institution. They were given the freedom to say, thus said the Lord. There were 450 prophets of Baal plus 400 prophets of Asherah, the goddess and wife of Baal. So they say. These false prophets were strategically positioned throughout the empire to uphold the evil status quo. And so in the time of Elijah, a type of the end time church that will be raptured, Israel worshiped the God of sex and money. So when you hear people t telling you about the people are divorcing and their wives and talking about divorce and remarriage and treating it like nothing, you have to understand. And again, people have an inordinate affection toward material things. Just as Jesus said concerning the Laodicean church, we are rich Increasing goods and have need of nothing. You have to understand it's a modern version of Baalism. The God of sex and money. Stay with me. It was believed that Baal was the God who controlled the economy. You have to understand in those days it was an agricultural basic economy. And they believed that Baal was the God of rainfall and fertility. It was Baal who caused their vineyards to grow and their orchards to grow. It was Baal who will cause their economy to boom and blossom. What they believed was that at a particular time in the, in the year... This God that they imagine will have intercourse with his female counterpart, the goddess Asherah. And when they come together and have sex, that is what will cause rain to fall. Because that is the fruit of their sexual activity. And that is what will cause the earth to bring forth fruits. But that was not all. In order, when you worship Baal, you had to do what Baal did. So they had temple prostitutes. So the worshippers of, of Baal will go into the temple. When Baal had sex with Asherah, they will have sex with the prostitutes. And this is what called, they believed caused them to be prosperous. So when the Bible talks about Baalism, it's not a simple thing. It was sexual perversion in the church. 
And I say the church because the Bible calls it the church in the wilderness. It was sexual perversion among God's people. And the reason why there was sexual perversion, it was because they love money. They believe they had to do that in order for their crops to grow. But behind it all, it was the same Satan today who is telling even pastors to allow divorce and remarriage in the church if you want to have big offering. It's the same. Come on, let's be real. It's the same. And, and, and remember, I'm talking about the, the, the last days. Elijah was a type of the last day church. One man in a whole nation. One man was raptured. God is sending a message by that. And it was the man who made us stand. Yes, he had his 7,000 who did not bow to Baal. But the fact that he was wrapped here, God is only coming for those that are faithful. It's a sign. It's an Old Testament sign. We live in a day and time when the devil's plan is to silence the prophet of God, throw them in prison, intimidate them. As a matter of fact, Elijah thought all were dead. He said, Lord, they have killed your prophets and I am the only one left. But God said, I have reserved 7,000, but they were not heard. Because of fear and intimidation. And so it will be in these last days. The Bible says, there will be a famine for the word of God. And the Bible says, where there is no vision, the people perish. So while Israel, while they were worshiping Baal, while they were, in, while they were involved in Baalism, while they were practicing their sexual perversion and sexual orgies and bowing down to the golden calf, my God. God, the whole nation had forgotten God. The whole nation had gone astray from God. Yet they were still claiming that they are worshipping God. They were saying that it is Jehovah who is sitting upon the bull. People have a way of mixing religion and say nothing is wrong with that. We know it was wrong in the time of Moses but somehow it is not wrong today. And so sex perversion and the greed and the love for money ruled the day. It was the order of the day and you couldn't come up and say anything that was true because the Bible says, amen, those who departed from evil made themselves a prey. In Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 15, it says, so truth fails and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. Amen. If you want to live right, you are in trouble. If you want to speak right, you are the problem. You are the troublemaker. And so darkness was covering the land. It's as though everybody had agreed to serve the devil and call him God. To live in sin and go to church and still say they are Christians. And it was in that time in that nebulous time in that dark time that Elijah appeared on the scene as a bold voice in the Bible tells us in chapter 17 Elijah appeared suddenly and with a bold word in his mouth in verse 1 he said as the Lord lives and as my soul lives there will be no rain, no dew, until I see. He said, you all are worshipping the devil as the God of rainfall. I will show you who is the God of rainfall. And when Elijah spoke those words, probably Baal, uh, Ahab said, oh, but after a while he realized, wait a minute, no dew, no rain, weeks upon weeks passed. No rain, things began to wilt and wither. Then he realized, wait a minute, it is that prophet Elijah who spoke this word and 
no, the nation is in trouble. This Elijah is a troublemaker. Look what he's causing in the land. And the Bible says he put a hit on Elijah. He said, I want Elijah dead or alive. The Bible said there's no nation that he didn't went looking for Elijah to kill him. One man, one event, turn a whole nation back to God. I want you to know number two in my, in my message here. Number two, there is a price for being faithful to God. The Bible tells us, chapter 19 from verse 1, Ahab went and told Jezebel, all that Elijah had done and how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. And the Bible says, then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah. She called a servant and she said, I want you to go straight to Elijah and tell him, may the gods do what he has done to these prophets to me and more if tomorrow by this time I don't kill him and the Bible says when Elijah saw that fear gripped his heart the Bible says yeah 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12 and all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution and Jesus said in John 14 and 17 and verse 14 he says I have given them your word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world hear me you cannot truly serve God and be loved by this world there's a price for making a stand for God my third point the reality of personal discouragement. I want you to know the best of the servants of God sometimes can become battle weary and become discouraged. As great as Elijah was, he faced a time of despair and discouragement. The Bible said when Jezebel sent that word, sent that messenger, verse 3 of the text, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba which belongs to Judah and he left his servant there and he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and prayed that he might die now, imagine this. If you're going to walk for about 12 hours from here, how far do you think you're going to reach in 12 hours' time? That's how far he went. And he left the servant there because Elijah believed when he prayed, God will answer his prayer. So Elijah literally planned a solo funeral. And he wanted no mourners because he was in despair. So he said, I'm going to die alone. There are pastors, uh, amen, that nobody knows because the servant didn't know, you know, what was going on in his heart. He said, stay here. He thought the man is going and come back. He was going to die. That's why you have to pray for your pastors. Pray for his family. Pray for the pastor's wife. Pray for those that are over you. Pray because they are only flesh and blood. I want to say to some man of God, you're in the wilderness dying and nobody knows. God said, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't resign. Hang in there. Probably you have faltered. God has not forgotten the good things that you have done. Don't give up. Today, the devil's plan is canceled. While he was there, lying down, sleeping. As far as he was concerned, I'm out of here. But the Bible says, as he lay and slept, verse 6, suddenly, somebody say suddenly. God is about to change somebody's story suddenly. 
The Bible says, suddenly an angel touched him and said, arise and eat. And when he looked, he looked around and there was by his head a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank. And the angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, arise and eat some more. Because the journey is too great for you. Let me tell you what the Lord showed me. I saw young people in the church, especially the young men, smoking weed. I saw one, but I said a weed stuck together and he wrote a joint, one joint. Beloved, let me tell you what shocked me. Are you listening? These young people, Brother Calvin, were convinced that they were not doing anything wrong. I'm in a situation, as I could tell you. What was wrong was if the old school people who don't understand the liberty we have, if they find out that is our problem, or if we smoke too much at one time. That was the only problem. I'm still in the dream, you know. Because in the dream, I carry the marijuana and the weed. So I have the feelings. I can tell you. So here, hear what I said to myself. Like Peter, remonstrating with God when he said, I don't eat any unclean un thing. I said, but I don't smoke weed. Since I got saved, I never touch another joint. God, so what are you showing me? And then the Lord called in the name of the organization. In this apostasy, who is leading the way. And he said, these are they. Smoking weed is nothing to them. No guilt. No, they were not convinced. That's the thing that baffled me. They were not convinced that it was wrong. No, they were not. The only thing is that these all of folks, if they find out, they will have an issue because they don't understand. Then the Lord showed me another scene. Sexual orgies. I said, the journey now starts. I said, the journey is too great for us. And guess what the Lord showed me? Homosexuality. Homosexuality in the house of God. I ain't doubt for lesbianism, but this time he showed me men. But look outside. Homosexuality is bad enough. But I saw three men on top of each other. So you see, going to another level. Three men in bed naked. The Lord says, son, look at that. He said, right in this organization that happened. The journey ahead is too great for us. I want to tell us today, like Elijah, the journey is too great for you. This journey cannot be made. What is coming upon the church in these last days? Hear me, brothers and sisters. The journey is too great for you. It 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 is too great for flesh and blood. It is too great for any natural man. It is too great for any natural person. It will take more than willpower. It will take more than mind power. It will take more than knowing a few scripture verses. It will take more than a little pie pie prayer. The journey is too great for you. Some of you said yes, sir, but I've eaten. I've eaten and I'm satisfied. Oh, but God is saying eat again. Eat again. There was a cake baked. Glory be to God. By God himself. That typified Jesus Christ. Jesus is the cake baked for us. Glory be to God. And the Bible says he went in the strength of that meat of that cake for 40 days and 40 nights. Oh glory be to God. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. When you fellowship with Jesus, you'll be able to go all the way. Peter 
was waiting by the wrong fire. When Jesus said, pray with me. When Jesus said, eat again. Jesus ate three times. He went and he prayed and he went and he prayed. And when he came back, he said, it is finished. He said, all you can sleep, sleep on. But I am ready to take them on. Peter said, I will die with you. If everybody reject you, not me, Lord. But the journey was too great for him. From Gethsemane to Pilate's court, he couldn't make it. He done cuss and deny the Lord. That is why the Bible says, stay in the presence of God. The Lord says, Martha, Martha, you are careful about many things, but your sister had chosen a better part to stay in the presence of God, to hear his word, to feed on Jesus. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I want to tell the church today, the journey is too great for you. What is coming upon the face of the earth no flesh and blood will be able to withstand it no flesh and blood will be able to bear it seducing spirits spirits of ungodliness the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 through verse 5 it says for in the latter days you got to know that perilous times will come for men shall be lovers of themselves covetous boasters Proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affections, truce breakers or covenant breakers, divorce and remarriage. That's that right there. False accusers, false accusers. Be careful of not every accusation you hear is the truth, saints of God. False accusers incontinent, can't contain themselves, can't stay off of pornography, can't stay off of adultery. They will be fierce. They will be despisers of those that are good. Watch out now. Be careful of being good. If you, be, if you are good, you'll be hurt. If you are good, people will take advantage of you. If you are good, people will despise you. People will hate you just for being good. Well, I'm out of time, but I want to thank you for tuning in to Light in the Word broadcast coming out of the beautiful Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. For those of you that have listened to this program, I want you to know the most important decision you can ever make is to receive Jesus Christ into your heart. I want to remind you that there's a heaven and there's a hell. And the Word of God tells us in Romans 10 and verse 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And so I want to lead you in this prayer. Uh, where you can give your life to Jesus Christ. Bow your head and close your eyes and say this prayer with me. Say, say, Lord Jesus, today I invite you into my heart as my Savior and Lord. Come into my heart. Save my soul. Make me one of your children. Folks, I want you to know if you had said that prayer from your heart, God heard you and uh, his word is that whosoever comes unto him, he will no wise cast out. What you need to do now is find a good Bible-believing church where you can hear the pure word of God and prepare for water baptism. We are situated here at 36 Espinette Street, Success Village in Laventon. For all those of you that are local, you can connect with us right here Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. We are here and you can pay us a visit. We are also operating in Edinburgh 500 in Shogwanas, number 141, 15th Street, Edinburgh, Shogwanas. I am there on a Sunday morning at 8, from 8.30, and you can visit us there for a live service. I look forward to seeing you. I want to also thank God for Mercy and Truth Television, the number one Christian television in the Caribbean region. Uh, support Mercy and Truth Television in your prayers and finances. Also support in your prayers, Basil Hansen. God bless you and thank you for listening.